There are two flavors of postdocs that you need to know about if we're going to answer this question. The first one is what everyone is trying to get when they do a postdoc, which is your independent fellowship. Now, this is where a university says, we need fresh new young academics, and therefore we're going to release all of this money, and we're going to have sort of like five or six new postdocs. Those postdocs can do anything they want as long as they uh, sort of present us with a research proposal and we approve it. And everyone really wants that because at the end of a PhD, PhD, you really haven't still been able to do genuine independent research. You haven't been able to do your own stuff. You're always doing something related to your supervisor or the principal investigator. <coughs> And that's why a lot of people do that style of postdoc is because it really gives you academic freedom to follow your interests and not the interests of some old crony in the university system. But a lot of people end up on postdocs that are the second type, which is where a principal investigator, academic supervisor, a crusty old dinosaur normally, that has got a load of money and they need people to do the research for them. And that's what I was on a lot of the time. It was where someone's got money and essentially they need research assistants. But research assistants are quite expensive, so we can get postdocs. Yes, these postdocs, there's a load of them, and so they tend to be quite cheap labor, and therefore they are responsible for delivery of the project, for uh, managing a lot of the components, for actually doing the research as well, and uh, unfortunately a lot of people get trapped in these sort of positions. And nearly all of these postdocs want to transfer to the first type of postdoc, that is where they have their own money, and they are only responsible for delivering research outcomes based on their own sort of grant application. Now the problem is is that a lot of people get stuck in postdocs because they are doing the second type under someone else, but they are always trying to find their own research. But of course, it's really hard to escape that postdoc treadmill. Now go check out my other video where I talk about why a postdoc sucks, but that's what essentially we're all trying to do. So a lot of people do postdocs the second type with other people money because they're trying to do the first one which is arguably the much more interesting one because you are doing what you want to do. I know a lot of people decide to do a postdoc because they are scared of looking like a failure. A PhD is a lot of work and people from outside academia looking in be uh, like, well, why wouldn't you just continue? You know, you've done all of this education and therefore getting a job in a university is the next step. And it's what we internalize as academics and PhD graduates. We're like, well, we owe it to ourselves to try to do that next thing. We owe it to the people that have been asking us and supporting us all these years to do a postdoc, but no one really knows from the outside what a postdoc is. It can be a holding pattern, it can be just this very depressive kind of limbo state in academia, but a lot of people do it because it looks like failure if after the end of your PhD you don't try at least to get into academia. Whereas I think the narrative is slowly changing where we can say a PhD is something that now opens up more doors outside of academia because academia is full. And also, I don't think many people would actually enjoy academia having been in there for a number of years. I think a lot of people would actually enjoy using their PhD skills outside. So it's not a failure if you haven't gone into a postdoc after your PhD. Arguably, it's the most unfailure thing you can do. Hope. Hope is what drives every ambitious person. It's what drives us through the toughest times in academia, through our PhD, our undergraduate, and it's hope that things will get better. Hope that you will get an academic position. I think a lot of people know that it's tough, know that it's very competitive to get into a tenure-track position, but a postdoc allows you to hang on to that hope. I think it's why I actually did a lot of my postdocs is because you hope you will build up evidence of your career that will make you competitive for an academic position in a university. There is hope that you will become that one lucky person that will kind of like bust through the metrics and just be well known. There's hope behind a lot of this. And unfortunately, not only hope, uh, but also luck plays a huge part in securing any sort of permanent academic position. And therefore, 
hope pushes people into a postdoc and then as the postdoc years go on and on, that hope diminishes slowly and slowly and what you end up with is a load of really annoyed late stage postdocs who just feel like they can't escape. But it is hope that gets you in there in the first place. Hope that you will be the cream that rises to the top. After spending a load of time in academia doing your PhD, your finances don't look that good. Your finances compared to the people that left academia, didn't do a PhD, or your mates that never even went to uni, your finances are the worst. So there's a part of me that did my PhD out of desperation. Desperation to earn some money, to get some form of return on investment on my PhD and my academic career. And uh, that desperation really makes post-docking uh, an easy avenue for most people. That desperation, when someone's offering you, you know, you don't have to do rubbish interviews, you don't have to fill out a load of uh, rubbish forms online to get a job, you don't need to go through the hiring process of some company that requires seven interviews and some rubbish questionnaire and psychological assessment. There's an academic there with some money that's like, ooh, come work for me. And you're like, oh, I want to do something else, but that's easy, so I'll do that. And so desperation of just trying to sort of like cling on or develop some sort of adult life after a PhD can mean a load of people do postdocs. And it does feel like that for a moment where you're like, oh, look at me earning money from my uh, education. It's not as much as it should be, but uh, ooh, all right, I can start actually trying to live an adult life. And that desperation means a load of people do postdocs when really they should put a little bit more effort in and head out into the real world. Postdocs are actually an incredible way to travel. Back when I was finishing my PhD in about 2011, 2010, something like that, it was very common for people to do postdocs abroad because it's kind of like a magical place. Abroad in a, in a new institution can make your home university see you in a whole different light. It's like you've been to this foreign land to do amazing research with foreign exotic people and supervisors. And when you come back, you were viewed kind of differently. Now that's changing. I know that people of my generation in academia, they went away to do their research, uh, postdoc positions in Germany, in the States, and they came back to Australia and uh, it wasn't really as well regarded as it was in the past. But going abroad, can be a fantastic motivation for doing a postdoc. It's a university system elsewhere. Universities are actually very similar across the globe. Um, there's many sort of like, you know, nuances, but ultimately you know what you're getting yourself in for. It's safe, it's secure, it just happens to be in a new exotic place. And so doing a postdoc not can only look good on your CV a little bit. It is not as much as it used to, but it can look good on your CV, particularly if you go into an institution abroad that is well known for your field. Um, but also it can just give you an opportunity to travel. You know, a lot of people during their um, undergraduate, PhD, they, they can stay in the same country, city, and even the same university throughout their whole education. And so a postdoc can be that moment where they decide to break the chains of their current institution and do something crazy and, and go live in another country. And the great thing is postdoc contracts are relatively short. So it's not like you're moving permanently, but you're like, oh, I'll go there for like two years, go here for a year, go there for, for three years. Um, I always tend to sort of head back to where I consider home, but it's a nice kind of like refresh doing research in a different country with different people. It's kind of like an extended holiday sometimes, so a lot of people do postdocs for that reason. A PhD doesn't necessarily prepare you for real research. 
Now this is insane to say, because that's exactly what it was meant to do, but modern research, the research environment, requires more than you, you'll ever get during a PhD. It requires you to plan budgets, to work out with grant application and funding bodies, all of their paperwork. It actually requires you to hire people as well. I was actually reminded the other day, I went to go meet up with some old colleagues, and uh, they were like, oh, do you know, do you remember you were my boss for a little bit? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I was. And you know, it required me to find someone with skills that I needed, and then find money in my budget to pay them, and then justify it to the grant body that that was a person that I needed, et cetera, et cetera, all of that stuff. So in modern research, there is so much more admin than people realize, and therefore you end up having to build up these skills on a postdoc. It's kind of like baptism by fire, like everything in research, where it's like, okay, here's some money, here's some grants, here's some whatever, go find people. Also, you've got this admin responsibility, and it can feel very overwhelming. And arguably, postdocs are the best place to learn that. Um, and so people do find that they want to do a postdoc for a couple of years before reaching out into the academic world, because it does give them that genuine taste of what modern research is actually like. So it can be a good learning experience. You just need to make sure you leave as soon as you can from a postdoc into whatever you wanna do next. And some people wanna do academic stuff, some people wanna go into industry, but yeah, postdoc can be very rewarding if you understand those are the real skills you're actually getting from it. Hmm. So there we have it, there's everything you need to know about postdocs and why people actually do them. Because surely a PhD is enough, right? Well, let me know in the comments what you would add. I am all about making sure that you are the most informed about academia so you can make your PhD and your research work for you. So let me know in the comments what you would add because I read all of it and it always makes these videos much better. And if you want to engage more with me, there's a couple of ways. The first way is to go sign up to my newsletter. You'll get five emails initially over about two weeks, everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, it's exclusive content that's not available anywhere else, so go sign up, it's well worth the risk. All I want is your sneaky email address, no spam ever. And the second way is academiainsider.com, that's my project where I've got my ebook, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide, and my Insider Forum, there's a blog growing there as well, so uh, go check that out, and I'll see you in the next video.